If you were to turn on CNN, the mainstream news, and look at an article about the housing market, they're probably going to tell you it's all going to crash, it's all going to burn down, we're all going to die, prices are going to either go up a thousand percent or there'll be no homes left. But in this video, I'm breaking down the stats, the numbers to show you the truth and give you some honest predictions. So let's jump into the video. So yes, it's been another crazy year in real estate all around the nation and especially here as well in Santa Barbara. We're wrapping up the end of 2021, about to head into 2022. And I wanted to break down some of the stats, give you some insight and also some potential predictions to be aware of if you're thinking of buying, selling or making a move in real estate. And if you're holding your property and you're just wondering where things are gonna go, here's some important things to know. So let's talk about the stats first. So condos in Santa Barbara County, South Santa Santa Barbara County, which is Goleta through CARP, um, we're up 18% in average price point um, and 12% in the median price point year to date. So that means if you own a condo, you're gaining between 18, 12 to 18%, depending on the location. And you know, condos, more bedrooms and um, sink standalone style are obviously been really attractive with the COVID. Um, buyer's market, people wanting space, people wanting an office in their home. Um, but that's still a big, big year of appreciation for condos when a lot of people were thinking, oh, because of COVID, no one's going to want to live in a condo or a compact space. Um, and the important thing to look in that as well is there, the number of condo sales were up 17% on the year. That is a very large increase in the number of transactions showing that there's a lot of condo buyers. As we know, millennials are one of the biggest groups of buyers right now. So a lot of millennials are considering a condo where you know they're potentially being priced out of single family homes, but they wanna get in something in their own. We know rents this year have gone up astronomically and people are making the decision to buy. A lot of people as well are selling their condos to try to move into single family homes. So that's gonna be something to keep an eye on. Let's talk about single family homes though. Um, up 28% average price and 25% in the median price. That means at the beginning of the year, if you bought a single family home for a million, you're beginning up between 25 to 28% in equity. So now your home is now worth 1,250. Um, that is a astronomically large jump in average sale price and average equity gain for a homeowner. And that means a couple of things. For homeowners, there's a lot of people right now refinancing to take out that equity to use it for a different type of investment, an out of state in income property, an Airbnb property. If you want to put it in Bitcoin, there's people doing that because they gained a lot of equity this past year. Um, and single family transactions, however, only went up 7%. And to me, that what that shows is there's not enough demand or not enough supply to fill the demand where, you know, the, the number of homes sold is only up 7% year to date compared to last year, compared to 2020, um, even though the demand is really high and there's just so many buyers you know, biting at every home that comes on the market. And if a home is clean, dialed in, staged well, marketed well, some of our listings this year got north of, you know, 17, 20 plus offers, all from qualified buyers ready to make a move. And obviously only one of them gets to take down that home. So now the rest of the buyers have to go on to the next home. And there's been a lot of buyer burnout and buyer fatigue. We're helping people on both sides navigate that because it's definitely something that's not easy to navigate. And let's talk about cash purchases as well. 33% of purchases this year were been so far done in cash. Um, there's a lot of cash buyers in the marketplace right now, and that can be discouraging if you're going in with a loan. Obviously, cash is king. They don't have an appraisal contingency. They don't have a loan contingency. They can close quicker. But the majority of the buyers are still not cash, if you think about that. You know, that shows 67% of all the transactions are using a loan. So if you have a loan then you're ready and you're pre-approved, um, don't be discouraged. Know that the majority of people buying are still buying with a loan. Um, and there's ways to structure your offer to make it almost as good as cash to get fully underwritten. You know, I bought my property a couple months ago and I used a loan. So don't think that just because you have a loan, you're not going to be able to buy a home in 2022. Let's talk about 2022 and some potential predictions and outcomes that I see coming up. The main indicator that I'm going to watch even more than COVID cases or external events is interest rates. Interest rates are going to go up 
or at least just hold steady, but they're not going to get lower than where they're at right now. I strongly believe that with all the research that I've done, talking with my lenders, um, interest rates will eventually have to go up, I believe, to combat inflation. And when they do, there will be buyers in the marketplace that can no longer afford what they could previously afford. And as we know, the majority of purchases are not done in cash, and those buyers will be affected. So what that means is that the buyers are going to have less money to work with, and potentially the astronomical, you know, 25% price increase that we saw in median increase, increase in single-family homes is no longer going to stay because buyers can't bite off as much and they can't offer incredible amounts over asking. So I think that's going to cause some buyers to potentially drop out and then sellers to realize that they're not going to be able to get as much money as maybe they thought. Um, we saw a lot of overzealous sellers, even in 2021, who listed their homes for crazy amounts, and there was there was still you had to, sellers still had to be realistic. You know, they would get over asking if they right, listed it right, but homes sat on the market that were just priced astronomically. And what I think is going to happen is that we're still going to have a year of positive appreciation for all those people sitting on the sidelines saying, is the market going to go down this year? I don't think so. But it's not going to be 25%, especially if interest rates go up. And I could be wrong. You know, it definitely could be another crazy year of, of incredible gain for homeowners. But me, you know, working with so many first-time buyers, trying to get a lot of people into homes, it's a little scary for sure to just think that, you know, a home that's worth a million two fifty today next year might be worth a million five plus. Like that's a huge gain and it's almost an unhealthy level of appreciation. You know, it's hyperinflation. So what I'm really gonna be working out for is when are rates gonna go up and how can I best prepare all my clients, both the buyers and the sellers, to capitalize you know, the sellers want to capitalize when there's multiple offers and the buyers need to make sure that they're use, they're locking in a low interest rate and also not overpaying for the home that, you know, whatever they feel like it's worth. We've had buyer clients this year get multiple contracts accepted under asking price and some of our buyers have paid over asking price, but then their neighbor's house sells, you know, two months later for a lot more than they paid. So obviously asking price is relative. All I know, me and the boys, me and the team, we're going to be helping a lot of people here going forward in 2022. We're going to be doing the best we can. It's going to be a dynamic, a fun, a challenging market like it always is. And if you've had questions, thoughts about what to do this next year, whether it's to buy your first home, we're helping a lot of people buy Airbnb properties, helping people cash out and refinance to use that money other place. Um, we're helping people sell and move out of town. Whatever it is, we're here to help in any way we can. So give us a ring, give us a text, and we look forward to another great year. See you guys.